Primetime News with Israel Lai. Good evening and welcome to the Primetime News on Joy News on Multi TV. Coming up tonight, Ghana may be hosting a manufacturing laboratory for methamphetamine, a narcotic substance said to be increasingly abused, trafficked, and manufactured across the continent. The U.S. government has announced efforts to help government comprehensively address the challenges being experienced in the energy sector by providing technical and financial support. Finance Minister said Tekpe says government is committed to meeting all targets set in the 2013 budget. As we commemorate International Women's Day today, Action Aid's country director says their failure to implement the Domestic Violence Act is responsible for the continuing All violence against women and sports and coming up in the next hour. Now, very first story, the 2012 report of the International Narcotics Control Board has identified the growing abuse, trafficking and illicit manufacture of amphetamine type stimulants across the continent. The worrying trend was first discussed when law enforcement agencies from across the continent met in Accra last year when, where it was top of the agenda. Executive Director of the Narcotics Control Board, Akresi Sapo, meanwhile, has told Joy News there are indications Ghana may be hosting a methamphetamine manufacturing lab. The report outlines drugs movement within countries in 2012, efforts by UN member states to control drug trafficking, as well as recommendations to help countries fight what has become a global menace. Whilst cannabis remains the most widely cultivated, trafficked and abused in Africa, the report said the new threat from amphetamine type stimulants is serious. It is suspected that there is a methamphetamine lab in Ghana, you know, which is, there's no concrete evidence but the, the report doesn't say what I'm about to say but it is just because of ephedrine use in Ghana you know I mean the import of ephedrine uh, is a major concern to the International Narcotic Control Board we import quite a bit of ephedrine and the International Narcotic Control Board thinks that that all that all that ephedrine doesn't go into the production of uh, licit drugs and so where is the deficit where, where, where is the surplus going to when you say clandestine lab, it simply means a lab where they do these things and it's not in the open. You can produce methamphetamine in a kitchen. You can produce it in your backyard. So those are what we call clandestine laboratories, not big establishments. Two such clandestine laboratories were dismantled in Nigeria last year. The INCB report also suggests countries experiencing political instability such as Mali and Guinea-Bissau tend to be safe havens for drug traffickers. It adds that the level of cocaine abuse has increased in West Africa, with the sub-region emerging as a transit point for the narcotic from South America to lucrative markets in Europe. The report recommends that governments should strengthen and build the capacity of drug enforcement agencies while providing treatment for drug abusers. In the case of Ghana, the narco boss said the ongoing review of the narcotics law to make the body a commission after seeing an increase in their enforcement officers will offer them a major morale boost. By the end of 2010, we had only 111. Now we've added four, another 450, you know, which is, a, which is a large number. To make us a commission, it will uh, enable us to do our own prosecutions. Um, it will make us, if you like, a little more self-financing. Not self-financing, but will be autonomous, as it were, from the ministry. Uh, we'll be reporting to a minister, but we'll be a little, we'll be like a, a, all other commissions, you know. There will be less bureaucracy. Interior Minister Kwesi Ahoy reiterated government's commitment to fighting the drug menace. The Ministry of Interior will encourage the Ghana Police Service and the Narcotic Control Board to broaden and improve monitoring activities of websites that are selling emerging psychoactive substances of abuse and products containing them. The International Narcotics Control Board is calling for the renewal of the spirit of shared responsibility in drug control. Ten years after its establishment, the African Peer Review Mechanism says though significant work has been done in the area of economic development and democracy, it believes there is more to be done. Officials have been speaking to newsmen about the organization's achievements so far.
The executive director of APRM, Professor SKB Asante, noted that though they have succeeded over the years in deepening democracy, strengthening achievements among African Union, there is still much to be done comparing Ghana to other countries. This is not what we were thinking should, that should be the case at all. We are very much worried about it. At least you go to certain countries, they say, well, I mean, developed countries, so well, so when it comes to education, this is a national policy. When it comes to, say, even infrastructure, like big roads and so on, this is our national policy. When it comes to health, the national policy, we do not have it here. And that now has been worrying some of us. So that education has become from like a football between the two parties. Oh, three years, another, oh, four years. Oh, this, I will do infrastructure. Oh, no, I will do this. It's really worrisome. According to him, Ghana should be able to have a national policy that covers all areas in governance rather than sticking to the various manifestos. The manifestos, he said, might have outlived its fullness before it could be implemented, leaving the major problems unsolved. A commission should be set up with a non-partisan one to come out with ideas about in terms of development in this area, this for everybody. So that even if there's, say, a road and so on, I mean, you do your part. When you are gone, then another party will come and then continue. He has therefore advised that the leadership in the country should come up with ideas that are non-partisan to help the country. The African peer review mechanism on 9th March will be celebrating its anniversary in participating member states across Africa. Electricity consumers can look forward to some assistance from the United States government to help resolve the current energy crisis. The new arrangement under the Partnership for Growth Initiative will see support coming through in the form of technical and financial support for key structural reforms in the sector. The deal will also see credit facilities being extended to small and medium-sized enterprises. The initiative is founded on what the U.S. government describes as the long-standing development partnership with Ghana to promote broad-based economic growth, poverty reduction, democracy and human rights. It is also in recognition of the impressive economic strides made by Ghana. Among the issues discussed is the need to implement legislative, policy and regulatory reforms and allocate adequate resources to address known and emerging constraints throughout the power sector and will be quite different from the second Millennium Challenge Compact on Energy that is yet to be concluded. Officials explain the proposed technical assistance to accompany funding will be in the form of diagnostic tools and technical expertise to assess challenges, recommend technical interventions and increase institutional capacity throughout the power sector. It also emphasizes increased participation of domestic and international private sector actors. Finance Minister Seth Tekwe hailed the new partnership, which he says is crucial if Ghana is to attain true middle income status. The goal of the PNG, for short, as we call the partnership for growth, is to assist Ghana and the other countries, which I mentioned, to sustain and broaden their economic growth by addressing key constraints, and the emphasis is on constraints that inhibit private sector development and their participation and their participation in the Ghanaian economy. This will be achieved primarily by addressing Ghana's regulatory, legislative, and policy reforms by allocating resources, both public and private to address known and emerging constraints through the power sector and to improve access to credit, particularly by SMEs. Deputy Chief of Mission at the U.S. Embassy, Patricia Asop, said Ghana is among four other countries worldwide because of its economic and governance structure to benefit from the partnership. These are actions that will unleash inclusive, broad-based economic transformation. With regard to credit, our actions are centered around five goals. Number one, reducing government 
engagement in the banking sector. Number two, strengthening the financial sector regulation and supervision. Number three, developing financial sector infrastructure. Number four, broadening and deepening the financial sector. And number five, encouraging development finance and supporting small and medium-sized enterprises access to finance. A technical and steering committee to see to the smooth implementation of the agreement was later formed. Key among the members is the Minister of Trade and Industry, Haruna Idrisu, Second Deputy Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Melissa Na, and the Finance Minister, Seth Tekwe. Yeah. Outgoing Director of the Ghana Prison Service, Michael Kofi Banta, is asking government to minimize the rates at which interior ministers are changed. Speaking at the pulling out ceremony held in Izana, is that the phenomenon affects continuity. Michael Kofi Bansa was commissioned as an assistant superintendent of prisons on 1st September 1980. He held various positions and appointment during his time in the service. In the year 2009, he was appointed the acting director general of the service and was confirmed by late President John Atamills in 2012. In his welfare address, Kofi Bansa noted some of the landmark achievements he advocated for, especially in the prison stations he served as commander. When I assumed duty as the head of the prison service in November 2009, I aspired to transform and turn the fortunes of the service along five main visions, namely to enhance professionalism of staff, to improve on the welfare and rights of officers, to enhance the corporate image of the service, to decongest the overcrowded prisons, and finally, but not the least, to enhance the training of inmates and income generating activities of the service. He lamented the frequent changes that the sector ministry does not help. By three years uh, ahead of this service, I worked under five ministers for the interior. I think uh, the ch changes are too frequent. And uh, His Excellency should kindly have a second look at that. His deputy, Matilda Bafor Iwa, is now the Director General. We're taking a break. When we come back, it's all about the women in our lives. <laughs> 